hi dr saxena here and uh, as usual we are talking about something i just want you to empower with some kind of uh, knowledge so that uh, you should always be prepared uh, in the sense you should always understand what is this particular concept about and uh, yes uh, this is uh, one thing i just want to talk about something like non toxic um, cancer therapies uh, which is the integral part of something called integrative oncology and uh, i this is the concept here is i just want you to talk about uh, a simple uh, stuff where we are trying to work it out i'm sure uh, with this particular uh, uh, i'm i'm sure i'm going to give you uh, some kind of food for thought uh, what is this particular thing why we are having so much diseases uh, when it comes to cancer this is always a patient starts asking why me doctor why i have not smoked uh, through life and i have not done any kind of uh, i am not into all colic also i have never spoke and why the hell i am suffering from this particular thing and doctors like us we never had any answers uh, trying to tell uh, what can be done so what i can always tell you is uh, there is uh, there are a lot of things which are uh, happening and we are always in search for a cure but what happens is that we, in spite of for the last 30 40 years what we have been seeing uh, they are still in the process of evolution there is no uh, still there is no magic bullet for this particular thing called cancer and uh, what i can always tell you uh, this was in 1971 the president nixon uh, richard nixon signed the national cancer act to dedicate a uh, part of uh, the national budget to cancer research through national cancer institute so unfortunately the um, the incidence as the mortality rates of cancer have been increasing ever since so uh, so what is the benefit of all this research funding uh, is a, um, a billion dollar question um, what uh, i can always tell you we were taught two important lessons uh, it has taught us that uh, we cannot buy the cure to cancer uh, that is one thing you should always understand said so it has taught us that um, we need to search for the cause instead of the cure uh, when i talk about what is a cause instead of the cure when uh, someone comes to me say saying that he's not a smoker he doesn't have things and all that you need to find out why this particular gentleman is having a problem with the lung cancer what is this small small cell cancer so we are trying to work out on some areas um because the the kind of thing it is so overwhelmed uh, the, the there are more number of patients there are more number of hospitals but um, because of the uh, the numbers and all that uh, i think uh, nobody is looking for the cause and everybody is concentrating on the cure so i believe if you find a cause the cure will be much easier so i don't uh, claim that i have found out a cure of cause and all that but i can see there are multiple reasons you have got something uh, which are culminating into cancer there are multiple reasons one is your metabolism another is your diet and third one is your pollution the way you are living in particular so all these things are additive and you need to uh, look at all these things so that we can always work out in a proper way so uh, this particular thing uh, we need to understand what happened in the history also what are the people who tried claiming the uh, cure for the uh, see there were some uh, simple cures which were been described in the literature and i always believe uh, you need to take a leaf out of that and start working from that particular process um, uh, this was uh, some great uh, there some great uh, minds who started exploring this particular thing and we if we can collate if we can uh, see the kind of uh, try to compare and see what is best uh, suitable at your circumstances so i had come to a reasonable kind of things where i can always tell my patient yes you have got a choice you can always go to the radiation or care, so, uh, chemo or surgery and all that but i would like to take you from a different perspective uh, if uh, the person requires both the things let him continue with that but what happens here is we are not only uh, when we work with a close mindset we are just giving a some prescription trying to tell them okay this is as with that cure and all that things are not uh, really uh, 
good things are not really happening with the patient. There are few exceptions, but um, uh, most of the patients are, are they get into the problem again and again. So what are these things I'm I'm talking about? So uh, the intense side effects, you have got nausea, general malaise, people, the, the quality of life is certainly compromised because of this particular stuff. So this particular thing which made us uh, try to understand yes there are some other areas also which I would like to uh, put across uh, apart from the com uh, general radiation chemo as well as this particular approach we are talking about uh, building the person rather than tearing them apart uh, we, we believe in kind of nutritional medicine number one and trying to work with what are the foods which can be taken or which cannot be taken because somewhere um, this is uh, we try to talk about the concept which was told by um, there were some great people who worked on this there's a, a doctor called Otto Warburg he worked on this bioxidic therapies he started telling oxygen um, is the problem with the with the oxygenation results in a cancer and he's absolutely right in the sense what we have seen this Warburg effect and it was um, it was later on by researchers like uh, Thomas Seyfried, Nicholas Gonzalez and all that they have shown effectively what is this particular process about uh, so uh, this is one thing I, I just want to tell you is we are not uh, taking for granted um, one thing is uh, really causing that particular thing uh, we don't believe genetics is the only reason uh, cancers are happening because we see we have never seen this kind of cancers in our forefathers so uh, so this is one thing which always have to do and having worked in an area called uh, environmental medicine I can always tell you there are a lot of things which are uh, we are we are able now we are able to handle it in the sense there are a lot of pollutants there are so many things in the pollutants of air pollutants of water pollutants of food what you take and uh, the kind of um, refined sugars what you are taking and all that so this is absolutely causing uh, some problems with your mitochondria cell uh, your cell functioning is uh, uh, hampered uh, it's not totally out but it's hampered your uh, my, mitochondria doesn't function so well so uh, imagine a situation where you have got a cell requires to properly function in an optimal way it requires sugar it requires oxygen and it requires a normal powerhouse which is the mitochondria uh, so what happens in the scenario what is happening here is you have got a cell wall uh, which is uh, cell wall is made up of fats and which is uh, really a big bilipid layer it's a very active ingredient and because of our trans fats and all that uh, things uh, this fat is causing this trans fats are causing the cell wall impermeability so effectively glucose doesn't enter properly into the cell or the oxygen doesn't enter into the cell if the glucose doesn't enter in the cell you get into a thing called diabetes and uh, the glucose entering the cell and uh, oxygen is not properly oxygen also enters the cell and if you have a mitochondria the uh, the glucose as well as oxygen they, uh, they, they get into a process called um, oxidation and all that and uh, this is called glycolysis which happens in the, inside the cell wall uh, in the mitochondria. This cell wall, uh, this glycolysis, it is both sides, it is one is aerobic glycolysis and another is anaerobic glycolysis. Why I am telling all this thing is makes matter, matters. Oxygen in presence of glucose metabolized in the mitochondria gives rise to 36 ATPs to 30 uh, and it is a normal thing your cell starts working well whereas if you have some ex glucose enters oxygen is lacking or you have got a problem with the mitochondria where mitochondria doesn't properly function so effectively the aerobic glycolysis doesn't happen so the cell has to revert back to a different kind of thing uh, if you are not having a um, it is something like that you don't have a petrol you try to work with some uh, other uh, you know, fuel and all that so similarly the cell has to fall back to this thing called anaerobic glycolysis anaerobic glycolysis what is happening is you have got glucose you have got a lack of pretty lack of oxygen 
and um, uh, sometimes uh, apart from that so this glycolysis aerobic glycolysis doesn't happen instead of that you get into an anaerobic glycolysis which is a facultative uh, kind of stuff and this anaerobic glycolysis what happens is you get effectively very less number of ATPs apart from that you get a lot of acids it can pyruvic acid or it can be lactic acid so this particular lactic acid and pyruvic acid uh, comes into the cytoplasm inside the cell and it increases the uh, this one and this particular acids are not able to be efflexed out of the cell wall into the exterior so that is the starting point of the cancer so the more number of lactic acids and pyruvic acid get accumulated the cell has to divide uh, in order to stay healthy in the sense it is a survival mechanism of the cell to divide so the, this is the concept from where uh, this is a metabolic concept from where the cancer is arising this is being uh, explained very well by Otto Warburg who got the Nobel Prize for this particular stuff it was in way back in 1940s and um, there the subsequently uh, we got in touch with uh, a good number of people who started showing us the path and we started concentrating on this one thing concentrating on reviving the mitochondria in the sense trying to improve the mitochondrial function by uh, because mitochondria gets impacted because of the toxins because of the uh, uh, toxins in the food water and air that is the basic kind of thing so what you are working out here is you are trying to remove these toxins so that the mitochondria restarts and along with that I'm trying to work on something like cell wall and all that permeability issues trying to work with the uh, good fats and all that so with this the the cells which has got something like anaerobic glycolysis which we are which we are working on less number of uh, ATPs and uh, resulting in the uh, excessive consumption of glucose and all that that falls back into aerobic glycolysis because of this uh, detoxification and all that at the same time we try to work on something like biooxidative mechanisms biooxidative oxy um, therapies usually we get give a lot of vitamin C's uh, hyperbaric oxygen try to work with some kind of uh, hydrogen peroxide ozone and other stuff so this is the kind of concept which we believe it has to work at the cellular level and once this thing starts picking up and we can see a sea change among the patients how they start working out so uh, this is the brief concept of what is this thing called anaerobic uh, uh, glycolysis and aerobic glycolysis and how it gets reflected to the uh, manifestation of cancer as well as this particular stuff and um, uh, this particular thing is again um, a um, uh, issue in the sense what we need to work it out you need to start working with the basics trying to work with the nutrition uh, aspect a lot uh, we this is what we try to work it out we need to empower you we need to educate you uh, because oh, you need to look at the simple sugars what are the things which you are not supposed to take what are a uh, few things which can help you uh, in maintaining your robust metabolism so the problem is the metabolism which is severely hampered and you need to uh, get back to your metabolism try to see that you can effectively starve the cancer cells I can always tell you one important thing cancer cells can they need glucose all the time if they are deprived of glucose they die uh, apart from glucose they have got some glutamine or they can use some fat sometimes so but when we talk about this process where we are effectively cutting down the carbohydrates simple carbohydrates and uh, trying to work on oxygenation and all that trying to do that um, uh, uh, oxygenation process trying to work with uh, something like pulse electromagnetic field this is our mainstay of therapies in cancer all cancers uh, we believe in working on uh, uh, trying to improve the uh, uh, membrane gradient over the cell membrane so these are all the things which are helping the cancer patient in a big way and uh, this is how we take up this particular thing and we are talking about this as a non-toxic cancer therapies and yes uh, this is something like integrity oncology and we, and, uh, we are here uh, to help the patients out 
uh, we are not talking about uh, we are we are sm um, we want people to understand some basics so that that will be a good thing for them thank you